Well, good morning and welcome to the June Rooster Booster Breakfast presented by the Greater Owensboro Chamber of Commerce. I'm Chad Benefield, your host for the morning. And I'm Candace Brake for the Chamber of Commerce. And between us this morning... Big Red! Yes! We are so excited to be on the campus of a Western Kentucky University Owensboro. And by the way, for the first time in months and months and months, look, no masks. Oh my gosh, come oh here. My <laughs> Fully vaccinated and loving every single minute of it. I miss you so much. I miss you too. I wanted to do that for so long. Uh, and we're giving you all virtual hugs this morning too. So thank you for being with us. We have a great program lined up for you. And obviously, one of the stars of the show is right here, Big Red. So what do you say? You ready to go inside? All right, team, make some noise. Here we go. Celebrating the Hilltoppers today. All right, Kim, it's after you. All right, to get things started this morning with our invocation, we're going to welcome to the program our friend Michael Vanover. Good morning. Would you all please bow your heads and pray with me? Precious Father, God Almighty, maker of all things, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace your mercy, and most of all, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the precious Son of the Father, who we are blessed to call brother and friend. You, who are above all things, we humbly ask, Father God, that you would raise us up for your glory on this day and every day forward, and that all glory would be according to your will. Please, Father God, lift us up and give us strength to fight the good fight for your name's sake, for the sake of all who do not know you or reject you. May discipleship of your word be on our lips as we serve others and lead by example all the days of our lives. May we gather here today in friendship, love, and in truth, and may those here gathered be encouraged by and steadfast in the joys you have given them. May we see all your many blessings. Humble ourselves before you, Father God Almighty. May our community thrive in your name. May our elected and appointed community leadership be centered around your will and glory. And may we use our gifts for your will, for your will leads to righteousness. Blessed be your name above all names. And blessed be the name of the Lord, Jesus the Christ. It's in your holy and powerful name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Hello, my name is Claire Linder and I'm a rising senior studying mathematical economics. I serve as a student ambassador through the Spirit Master organization. I'm standing in front of Guthrie Bell Tower, which was built to honor past, present, and fallen members of the armed forces. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So as we continue with this morning's Rooster Booster Breakfast, I am so pleased to be with my friend, Debbie Philman. Good morning. Good morning. Now, Debbie is the local chapter president for WKU's alumni, and this makes sense right that we're standing on the fight song. I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> you do not have to sing it. Um, so let's talk about the alumni chapter and some of the things that you all do locally uh, for the folks who have graduated from WKU. Yeah, we're one of the largest alumni chapters in the world, actually. I think we're around the third largest alumni chapter. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, we have a, a large con a constituency of, of alumni here in the area. And uh, so what we really try to do is just keep everyone engaged and excited about what WKU is doing. We have scholarships that we uh, offer as part of our uh, uh, association, and uh, our fundraising is really about those scholarships. That's fantastic. And I was looking ahead to the summer calendar of events. I noticed there's a pickleball event coming up in June. Yes. And then uh, what about Friday after 5, July 9th? That's exciting. Yes. July 9th will be at the Holiday Inn down on the riverfront. Uh, back to the pickleball, we hope you'll all sign up. I hope you'll be there uh, because we're going to do a little clinic and teach people how to play pickleball. Oh, that's good. Because actually I'm fascinated by the game and I watched this YouTube tutorial, so I think an in-person instruction would be ideal. And then in August, there's a huge golf scramble. Right. And we used to do a golf scramble years ago, and we're sort of bringing it back. 
That's fun. Now, if there are folks who are watching this morning who are WKU alum and they want to uh, get more information about joining uh, the alumni chapter, how do they do that? Uh, they, we have a Facebook page. We have an Instagram account. And I think really in this venue, they will also want to know that we have a business directory. And so anyone who owns a, a business that's a WKU alumni can get in our business directory. And that's on, we have an app. Hey. The app is very handy. And speaking of business directories, it's the time of the morning. We uh, introduce our brand new chamber members, and we're going to do that. We're going to throw it to Hannah Thurman, who's going to introduce you to our brand new members. Take it away, Hannah. Brasher's Little Nashville is an intimate venue with the best sound quality this side of Nashville. The bar will be fully stocked with cold beer, great spirits, and handcrafted drinks, and especially the best bourbons Kentucky has to offer. Brasher's Little Nashville will hold monthly ticketed concerts from national touring artists you want to see. There's always live music. You can expect world-class live bands every weekend, open mic night and solo artists on Thursday nights, and live entertainment for your song Sunday brunches and Bloody Marys. Sure, there will be country music, but you'll also see some of the best rock, blues, pop, and bluegrass acts around too. You're going to have a great time. Brasher's Little Nashville plans to be open in August and can't wait to see you there. Welcome to the Chamber, Brasher's Little Nashville. Located in the heart of downtown Owensboro, Horse Feathers Gifts is a woman-owned jewelry boutique that offers handcrafted pieces full of meaning and good vibes. Their carefully curated shop highlights not only their creations, but the wares of makers from across the United States. Their ample studio space allows them to offer workshops and ladies' nights out to help encourage the community to get their creative juices flowing. Welcome to the Chamber, Horse Feathers Gifts. Porch Fest OBKY is a music festival where porches become stages, yards become venues, and radical generosity and goodwill rule the day. The festival will be held this year on the welcoming front porches of the Griffith Avenue area on Saturday, June 12. The family-friendly free event will feature dozens of musicians from a wide variety of genres. Porch Fest organizers select the best variety of performers from a submission list of over 100 entries. These submissions include artists from right here in Owensboro, in addition to artists from Nashville and other areas of Tennessee, Ohio, the Carolinas, and more. Attendees will stroll from porch to porch and camp out on front lawns as they enjoy live local talent. Porch Fest OBKY will bring important attention to the beautiful architecture, history, ongoing revitalization, and friendly front porch lifestyle of the Owensboro area. Welcome to the Chamber of Porch Fest OBKY. Serene Relief Wellness is where luxury meets therapy. By customizing their services to each individual client's needs in a tranquil atmosphere, they apply their knowledge and specialized training. They assist their clients to reach one or all of four primary goals, pain management, stress management, mobility, and overall relaxing wellness. Welcome to the Chamber Serene Relief Wellness. The Strive Health Owensboro location is a brand new state-of-the-art facility designed to enhance the patient experience. Strive Dialysis Centers feature the latest in dialysis technology, private treatment suites, and a compassionate approach to providing dialysis care. Many community members and their loved ones spend countless hours per week in a dialysis center, and Strive Health's mission is to make you feel at home while receiving care. Welcome to the Chamber, Strive Health. Thanks, Hannah, and a big hearty welcome to all of our brand new members of the Greater Owensboro Chamber of Commerce. I still have Debbie with me because we need to mention a very special event going on this month. It's the Join in June campaign. Yes, Join in June, if you'll join the WKU Alumni Association, all the proceeds that first year will come back to the local chapter that goes directly into our scholarship funds. That's very cool. All right, so uh, now we have to do something, and actually the person involved has no clue. Uh, we need to recognize our Ambassador of the Month, and he happens to be on campus. Uh, it's Michael Vanover. Michael! <laughs> hey, Michael. Yo. He has no idea this is happening. Hey, walk up the stairs. We have something to share with you. Oh, wow, okay. I kind of feel like a Vita. Like, I want to turn around and speak to my people. Do I need to smile? Or have my uh, you probably should smile. Here he comes, everybody. We should applaud. applaud. <laughs> Michael Vanover is our ambassador of the month. Oh, hey! <laughs> Good news. Right, exactly. Someone's worth the hike up the stairs, right? Sure was. Okay, so now we are going to introduce uh, the president of WKU. So please make welcome uh, President Timothy Cavoni. Good morning. I'm happy to start the day with you at my fourth Owensboro Chamber of Commerce Rooster Booster. WKU is honored to sponsor this event as we've done for the past several years. 
and I look forward to the time when we can gather once again in person. The past year brought with it many unique challenges. It also provided new opportunities for us to meet the needs of learners throughout our region. Never before have we been confronted with entirely realigning how we work with students and each other. And never before has our WKU family worked together so quickly and resolutely to develop an effective learning environment that meets every student, literally, wherever they are. What we experienced since March of 2020 demonstrates more than ever before the underlying strength and resilience of our university. And while no one across our country or around our world was truly prepared for the circumstances that unfolded during the last year, I could not be prouder of our institution's response, including all those at WKU Owensboro, to arguably what was the largest challenge in WKU's history. So to our faculty, staff, students, alumni, and partners across Owensboro and Davis County, thank you. What we've experienced together this year will never be forgotten. And as we look forward to the academic year ahead, we fully anticipate a return to normal operations across all of our campuses this fall, including a transition back to hybrid courses in Owensboro, similar to the pre-pandemic blend of in-person and online work. Now, while we're planning a shift toward normalcy, we will of course continue to follow guidance from our public health officials as we formalize and finalize our plans throughout the summer. WKU has accomplished so much more than meeting head on the challenges of the pandemic during the last year though. Because of the collective work done across the university towards the goals in our strategic plan, WKU is experiencing remarkable positive momentum and achieving record-breaking successes, including the largest increase in our freshman class size in three decades that brought with us the highest GPA in WKU's history. A first to second year retention rate increase of 6.9 percentage points in just three years. And the highest six year graduation rate in our university's history. What we're seeing is that more students are coming to WKU because we've made it more attractive and more accessible than ever before. More students are staying and completing their degrees because we've grown and enhanced our targeted student support structure. And more graduates are choosing to remain in Kentucky because of the growing partnerships in our 27 county service region and beyond. When we look at this area specifically, last fall, we saw a 93% year over year increase in the number of freshmen coming to us from Davis County. We credit much of this growth to the new freshman scholarship program as we offered just over a half million dollars in institutional gift aid to fall 2020 freshmen from Davies County. Building upon the success of the new scholarship program in fall 2020, we announced four more new scholarship offerings, the Hilltopper Guarantee, the WKU Border State Scholarship, the WKU Family Scholarship, and a retooled tuition incentive program. The Hilltopper Guarantee in particular will provide even more access to students in the Owensboro, Davies County area guaranteeing 100% tuition coverage for any first-time full-time freshman who receives Pell Grant assistance and has at least a 3.0 cumulative unweighted high school GPA. As we continue to increase access and opportunity at WKU, I'm so proud of the work being done right here in Owensboro to support this effort. Just last year, 19 local students were awarded more than $92,000 in scholarships from local community donors. For those donors joining us this morning, on behalf of all those at WKU, thank you for giving back to your community so that students from Owensboro and Davies County can have the opportunity to pursue a college degree. We also invested in upgrading the technology in four more classrooms on our Owensboro campus. With this work complete, 75% of our classrooms in Owensboro have the capability to connect faculty from the Hill and other regional campuses to our students in Owensboro, making more hybrid programs accessible to students here. Additionally, we remain committed to continuing our work to develop offerings in Owensboro and Davies County that match the needs of the area. For example, 
This spring, the Bachelor of Social Work opened admission for a fall 2021 online program, increasing access to students in the Davies County area to a program with strong demand. And we continue our work on the Criminology Bachelor's Completion Program, our work with the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences on programs in both engineering technology management and computer information technology, and our work with our Dr. Scott Williams, president of OCTC and a great partner, together to serve place-bound students. As I often say, we're a learning institution, and our work is not and never will be complete, but I am pleased with the growing access to WKU courses and degrees in Owensboro, and the work being done behind the scenes to remain relevant and to best support and elevate the area. Finally, let me thank Forrest Roberts for her work as chair of the WKU Owensboro Advisory Council. I'd also like to recognize one of our Owensboro staff members, Kevin Dorth. He received the Faculty Award for Excellence in Part-Time Teaching from the Potter College of Arts and Letters. Our WKU Owensboro Campus Operations Manager and History Department Instructor, Kevin, is also a Chamber Ambassador and active in the local community. So Kevin, on behalf of all of those at WKU, congratulations. And to the Chamber and to all who are viewing the program today, thank you for the opportunity to share. And thank you for your important partnership and collaborative work. I look forward to our future here in Owensboro as we create together important, life-changing, positive effects for our students, our university, our communities, and beyond. Go Tops! President Caboni, thank you very much, and I am thrilled to introduce you to two new friends this morning here at the WKU Owensboro campus. I have with me Carol Mercer and Jerry Thompson. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so Jerry, you go first. Tell everybody what you do here. I am a site instructor, and Carol's going to tell you more about site instructors in a second. And uh, I uh, think one of the most important aspects of our elementary education program is that the students get to go to uh, the elementary schools here in town and they learn from current teachers and the current teachers are teaching our future teachers who will actually have jobs in their schools one day. So I think that's a very important relationship to have. Can you tell that Jerry is a side instructor? I mean, she is firmly planted behind this podium. <laughs> like it's, she was born to be behind the podium instructing. I love it. And so, Carol, uh, let's talk more about the elementary education program. Anything you want to share with the folks who are tuning in this morning? Well, the most obvious benefit, I think, for a student attending here at WKU Owensboro is the fact that they can remain closer to home. And this works so well with our non-traditional students that enroll in our program. But the past couple of years, we've even been getting more traditional students that uh, most of them come over from across the road, OCTC, and they're ready to begin their courses for their teaching career. So to me, you know, that's a big plus too, because we like a variety of students in our classrooms, the traditional as well as the non-traditional, because they can learn so much from each other. They have the benefit of having us in there with them, present for every class. And we, of course, uh, do follow the professor or adjunct instructor who is teaching from the large screen. But what we do in here is to make sure that our students are able to do the hands-on activities. We facil facilitate the discussions that go on in our rooms. Can I tell you? Experience that Carol was actually hesitant about speaking to you all this morning. <laughs> I'm sorry when I get started at the <laughs> I, mean, I think I just finished my graduate degree. Thank you so much. No, that's awesome though. That's fantastic. I mean, I just want to show you all of the benefits <laughs> our program has to offer. And that's the best part about it. And i got to say, a little known fact, I actually did graduate work here. And uh, and I'm very familiar with these types of courses that you're you're talking about. And it is really, really convenient. It's a great way to learn, and it's a great way to pursue that to degree in hydro higher education. Yes. Yeah. And Jerry and, I, Jerry and I actually assigned the grades. We followed the progress of our students. 
and we are familiar faces to these students as they go through our program. And we become lifelong friends, <laughs> all of us, for one big happy family. That's awesome. Another member of this one big happy family is Kevin Dorth, who's here this morning. We're bringing him into this happy family. Where are y'all going? <laughs> we're Do you see, giving, I mean, we're Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> So, Kevin, um, you know, they were talking about uh, traditional and non-traditional. The last, what, 12 to 14 months, completely non-traditional, right, because of uh, COVID-19, the pandemic. So how did you all adapt here at WKU? So the pandemic really forced us to embrace technology. And uh, as an adjunct history instructor, uh, I was able to teach a class uh, using this new technology. So it, it enables us to reach more students across each campus. Uh, Glasgow, Elizabethtown, and Bowling Green. Yep. Um, it, it allows for more flexibility for student schedules. Uh, we can expand course offerings. And of course, we follow the guidelines to ensure student privacy when recording Zoom sessions. And it's also given us the opportunity to serve local organizations uh, to use our Zoom uh, meeting classrooms for in-person and people that couldn't meet in person. Uh, overall, it just creates a more convenient way for students to take classes. Awesome. All right, it is time for our chamber update. Okay, we're going to wave goodbye. Bye. You all were awesome. Thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, it is time for our chamber update, and with that, of course, our president and CEO, Candace Break. Thank you so much, Chad. It's so good to be here with you today at the campus to see the students, the faculty, the staff here, and just to really appreciate all that they do for our community and our commonwealth. But now it's time to shift our focus a bit to the chamber and what we're doing this month. And it's a busy month at the chamber. Following Rooster Booster today from 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m., we're hosting a drive through COVID-19 vaccine clinic with the Green River District Health Department at the Convention Center. For all your details, just visit our website or our Facebook page. Anybody getting vaccinated today will also receive some free merch from the Health Department and from our Rooster Booster sponsor, WKU in Owensboro. So hurry down while the supplies last. We're also excited to announce that we're offering an additional health insurance plan for individuals. It's called Anthem Enhanced Choice for Chamber Members. And if you're interested in learning more about this new insurance program for single uh, plans, then please contact Shelly. Last month, as you know, we celebrated two new businesses joining our community. We welcomed First United Bank and Trust to their new location at 3012 Parish Avenue. First United is a Madisonville-based community bank that recently celebrated its 25th anniversary. We had a great ribbon cutting and we're so excited to have another strong financial partner right here in Owensboro. We also celebrated the grand opening of Jiffy Lube Multicare at 2990 Hayden Road off of Highway 54. This is a brand new state-of-the-art facility with a great local team and we're excited to have Jiffy Lube here as well. We have a, several ribbon cuttings coming up this month. Tomorrow, we start off uh, June with a one-year anniversary celebration of Willow and Pine Market with a ribbon cutting at 1215 at their downtown store. And we also will have a ribbon cutting at the Center and Casa of Ohio Valley's new location at 608 Frederick Street uh, next Friday, June the 11th at 1215. And then next Saturday, we're going to have a ribbon cutting to kick off the start of Porch Fest on Saturday, June 12th at 2.30 at 723 Griffith Avenue. Come out and join us for the ribbon cutting and stay for great music and all the fun that happens at Porch Fest. And finally, we're going to have a ribbon cutting at Stepstone Family and Youth Services on Friday, June 18th at 1215 at their new location at 2601 West Parish Avenue. We invite everybody to join us for these ribbon cuttings. It's so much fun to get out, to celebrate our neighbors that are starting their businesses and fulfilling their dreams, and it's always fun to be together. Uh, later on to this summer, we have some great events coming up. Save the date for Shop Owensboro Summer Edition. That's going to be on Saturday, July 24th, and then our annual Chamber Golf Classic will be Friday, August the 27th. Make sure you keep watching social media and checking your emails. We'll be sending out information for both of these events very soon. Y'all won't want to miss it. Our next Chamber Ambassador meeting will be Wednesday, June 16th at noon. And Leadership Owensboro is gathering for Changing Our Community Day on Thursday, June the 17th. This will be our last class day for the class. And this evening, the same, the same day on June 17th, we're going to be celebrating graduation. And that's presented by German American Bank. We're also going to be opening up applications and nominations for Leadership Owensboro Class of 2022 soon. So if you're interested, be sure to watch the emails and social media for details on how to apply and how to nominate people that you think would be great for this program. As always, we encourage you to shop chamber members. We want to thank all of our chamber members who continue to invest in our work and in the community every single day. You can find our membership directory on our website at chamber.owensboro.com. 
And to close out the chamber update today, we want to remind everybody that next Rooster Booster, July 1st, we will be in person. We'll be in person at the convention center. West Lynn is our sponsor and we'll be uh, planning on some special fun things that we can do as we get back together and start celebrating in person after this uh, long time of being away from one another. We hope you have a great month and we look forward to seeing you on July 1st. Candace, thanks a bunch. I just still cannot believe we're already into the month of June in 2021. But exciting things happening at the Chamber and exciting things happening here at WKU Owensboro. And I have two more special guests with me. Uh, I have to my right, this is Kayla Lofton. Hello. <laughs> Wave to the virtual audience. <laughs> to my left, I've got Ryan Schutz. Hi, everyone. Okay, so we're going to talk to Kayla first. You are, I'm going to get this right, the Diversity Recruitment Officer for Western Kentucky University. That's right. I love the title. So explain to folks specifically what you do. So pretty much what I do is I focus on recruiting diverse students. So traditionally uh, minority students. So black students, Hispanic, Latinx, Asian, Pacific Islander, things like that. Love. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about scholarships uh, specifically. What types of scholarships are available for students who are looking to pursue higher education? Sure. So recently our scholarship model has changed a little bit and it actually changed prior to COVID. So we eliminated the ACT and the SAT requirement. So that means that about eight, a little more than 80% of our students are eligible for scholarships as incoming freshmen. That's awesome. Can I tell you a really embarrassing ACT story? You don't have time for this. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is great. So when I was a junior in high school, the first time that I took the ACT, I had really bad seasonal allergies and I went to pick up my friend Rob uh, and his mom said hey um, I said she said your, your your eyes are watering you're sneezing a much what's wrong I said I have allergies really bad she said well here let me give you some Benadryl I fell asleep oh, no. oh, wow. during my first ACT test <laughs> needless to say I had to take it again did really well the <laughs> second time thank goodness there was a second time right. um, Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you. And thanks for what you do at Western. I love that. All right. This face may look familiar to some of y'all. Uh, you spend a lot of time in local high schools. I sure do. And you've been to actually in person Rooster Booster breakfast. I have, I believe, uh, two or three in the past, and I'm excited to be here virtually with you all today. All right. So, Ryan, let's talk about the admissions process. Absolutely. And getting students enrolled here at WKU. Yeah. So, our admissions process is really easy. Um, it's really mainstreamed through our website. It's kind of a one-stop shop for all of your admissions needs. You can go on there, uh, fill out the application. It takes no more than 15 or 20 minutes to fill out. Um, there's no essays or anything like that involved. It's just a quick application. Um, and then there's just a few things that you'll send in afterwards. But yeah, I'm really proud to work with the students of Owensboro and Davis County uh, and be a part of this community in that way. Love that. And by the way, uh, speaking of being a part of this community, can we just take a time out at this area we're at today? I mean, outside of the campus here in Owensboro. It is gorgeous. It I mean, is stunning. It's stunning. <laughs> I feel like we're we're like on National Geographic TV. Now. It's stunning. The vistas are amazing. But no, it really is. It's beautiful here. So um, at this time, we have to do some more work, y'all. Good with that? On it. Uh, we're going to turn the program over to our chamber board chair, uh, Clay Ford, who has a very special uh, introduction for you. Good morning, chamber, and welcome to June's Rooster Booster. We are so excited to have you with us this morning, and we can't wait to see you in person next month. We're thrilled to have Mark Marsh, the new CEO of Owensboro Health, as our guest speaker this morning. I'm going to quickly read through his bio, but then we're going to have a couple of special guests to introduce and interview him as well. Owensboro Health has named Mark Marsh a healthcare executive who has led hospitals in Kentucky, Tennessee, and Florida as its next president and chief executive officer. Since 2016, Marsh has served as president of the Orlando Health System, where he expanded the heart program, achieved national recognition for quality, and opened new cancer and rehabilitation centers. Last January, he opened Horizon West, a new six-story hospital in Orange County. His 25-year executive, executive career also includes CEO tenures at Gateway Medical Center in Clarksville, Tennessee, Greenview Regional Hospital in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and Marshall Medical Center in Lewisburg, Tennessee. Marsh is a native of Cincinnati and played quarterback for the Western Kentucky University football team that made the NCAA playoffs in both 1987 and 88. He also played baseball for WKU. Marsh's professional distinctions include Young Health, the 2003 Young Healthcare Executive of the Year in Tennessee, awarded by the American College of Healthcare Executives, and the WKU Distinguished Service Medal in 2009. He will be joined in Owensboro by his wife, Julie, and their three children, Clay, Elizabeth, and Austin. 
Mark, we are so glad to have you and your family coming to Owensboro, and we can't wait to work with you as a chamber uh, to lead this community forward. Uh, we're now going to be joined by a couple of special guests. We will be joined by the 2018 Chamber Board Chair, Bart Darrell, for an interview to help Owensboro get to know Mark, but we also have a special guest to help us welcome Mark, WKU Athletic Director Todd Stewart. Todd and Bart, take it away. Good morning. This is Todd Stewart, Director of Athletics at Western Kentucky, and I appreciate the opportunity to be part of the Rooster Booster Breakfast. Having been to the breakfast before, I know what a special event it is, and I'm really glad that you will soon be hearing from Mark Marsh. For those of you who do not know, Mark was a standout quarterback at Coleraine High School in Cincinnati before coming to the Hill and spending five years at Western Kentucky, during which he helped lead us to two conference championships and then, as a fifth-year senior, got the most notable recognition that I think you can get. He was named a captain, which shows the respect that he had throughout the football program. After leaving WKU, he entered the healthcare profession where he's had a very distinguished career of over 25 years. And now, fortunately for all of you, it will take place in Owensboro. Mark has had an impact everywhere that he's been. He certainly impacted our program. And it's my pleasure to introduce a WKU legend, Mark Marsh. Okay, well, first of all, Mark Marsh, welcome to your first ever Rooster Booster. Man, um, so excited, Bart, and who could uh, ask for any more than to, to be able to have this conversation with you. So I'm really excited, uh, Bart. So. Well, just so everybody knows, Mark Marsh is coming to Owensboro Health. If you haven't heard that, you've been asleep under a rock somewhere. And uh, Mark and I go back a long way. And what we're doing this morning for Rooster Booster, Mark, we're just going to introduce you to the people of Owensboro, the, uh, the business and the civic community. And it's full of wonderful people. And I know that, of course, Western Kentucky University uh, is sponsoring the Rooster Booster this morning. And you uh, went to school there and were a quarterback for the Hilltoppers. And I know Dr. Gaboni, we're glad to have him here today as well. And I always enjoyed Dr. Gaboni when I was president at Wesleyan because we would have dinner together and we would tell each other how great we were because, you know, nobody else would do that when you're a college president. But, Absolutely. So we're, we're glad to have him here. So uh, first of all, Mark, uh, just if you, if you don't mind, just open it up with talk about who is Mark Marsh? Talk about your family <laughs> and uh, just what's your background and who, who are you that's coming to Owensboro Health? Well, thanks, Mark. I certainly enjoy this morning. Uh, let me just first by start by saying, hey, so excited about coming back to the Commonwealth and uh, more importantly, really excited about coming back to, uh, to Owensboro. And uh, so uh, I'm coming back certainly with a, a beautiful bride, uh, Julie, uh, a marriage of uh, 28 years now. And, and we actually met at Western Kentucky. And so we uh, both are former uh, WKU alumni and su su such a special place there. But uh, um, along with that, uh, we've got three uh, beautiful young children a um, little older now, and so exciting to watch them grow and mature. And most of their roots uh, were there in, uh, in you know, South Central Kentucky. But uh, um, so, so along with Julie, I have my oldest son, um, uh, Clay, is a um, uprising, a rising senior at University of Central Florida uh, in engineering. So, so proud of him. So he'll finish up here at, at UCF. Um, I have uh, my middle uh, daughter. We just uh, celebrated and graduated her uh, senior uh, high school year down here in Orlando. But uh, She'll be attending Belmont University this fall. So really excited. And so keeping her close by there in, in Nashville. And so certainly will be glad to have her around. And, and then our last one is our, our young, uh, energetic uh, Austin. Austin will be an um, uh, incoming uh, junior at uh, right now, it looks like, uh, at Owensboro Catholic. So certainly a part of the fabric. And uh, Austin's uh, uh, full of energy, looking forward. He's uh, probably the most excited about meeting a bunch of new friends. And so that's that's a little bit about the family, uh, Barton. So so proud and uh, again uh, with the family and just uh, I'm blessed uh, with them every day and watching them grow but uh, certainly have a beautiful bride and uh, Julie's uh, hard work with the family allows me to do what I do every day and so uh, just we're so eager to get back and be a part of the fabric in, in, in Owensboro. Well from a career uh, perspective you have an interesting background in healthcare Mark because you have uh, I, of course you when you and I first met you were at Greenview Hospital in Bowling Green yeah. and um, then you've been in Orlando at a very in a very large city, if you will, working in healthcare, And I just, I would like to hear from you, what, what do those two experiences in somewhat different places, how do you think that gives you an advantage as a leader of Owensboro Health, you know, in a community this size? What, what advantages do you have that maybe others don't? Yeah, I think that the big piece, uh, Bart, because a lot of people have asked me the question, a lot of times in healthcare, people ask you, what's the differences? Because some of these are for-profit, some are not-for-profit. Um, at the end of the day, it's about how we care for each other and how we care for our patients and how we advance healthcare in these various communities. And so 
uh, I think the one advantage, distinct advantage really is, is, is knowing the roots and, and having the roots of, of knowing, um, you know, I'll say South Central Kentucky, Western Kentucky, and just knowing the people. And so I think, you know, uh, certainly we're going to have strategies and ideas, but I think really those relationships that we'll form, uh, many of those are there, but really cultivating those great relationships with the medical staff, with the, with the community leaders, the board, and, and ultimately the team members. And so I think, but having those roots and those ties back here in, uh, in, in Kentucky and in, in that area, I'm um, certainly around Owensburg, which I am somewhat familiar with. Um, I think it really gives an advantage and I think it will accelerate and really allow us to build upon the great things that we're already doing at Owensboro Health. One of the things, Mark, that you'll learn about Owensboro, and you probably already have to some extent just during this process, but this community is, everybody seems to really enjoy being civically engaged. And uh, it's hard to, it'd be almost impossible to not find somebody who want to help you do a, an initiative here in this town. It's just an amazing place. And I'd like you to talk a little bit, if you don't mind, about your philosophy or your view on the partnership that probably must exist between a community, a civically connected community, and a healthcare system. Absolutely. I think that's a great point, uh, Bart. As much as I loved our last five years in Orlando, Orlando was a great opportunity. And I think all these build and allowed me to um, build upon my career and, and, and learn and grow every day. And you're still learning and growing every day. But uh, in Owensboro, the fabric um, and really those partnerships, because Healthcare in Owensboro Health really is, is a major catalyst. You got the education systems, you certainly have the healthcare, but um, it's a very vibrant part of the community. I think these partnerships, whether it's with the community leaders, uh, whether it's with the physicians, whether it's the board, but you re- it's the collective um, nature of each other working together for the common good. Because you do those things, I think ultimately, as it relates to healthcare, the patients ultimately benefit from that. I think those are just going, to, just going to allow us to have provide better quality of care, better outcomes, and a more patient-friendly environment. But I'm really excited about because I do have some roots with Owensboro. I spent time there uh, with Little League ball games at health parks, at you know Friday night football games at Owensboro High School. And so I, I understand the people, the cultural piece. So really, I'm excited, and I see the energy. The few times I've been to Owensboro during the interview process and elsewhere, it just reminded me about the special place it is there and just the energy, the vibrancy. And so that's what really gets me motivated. This is kind of like, uh, Bart, this is game day Saturday. I'm here, man, uh, sweaty palms, I'm ready to go. Ball, get, uh, Coach, give me the ball. And like I said, I'm just really excited. I cannot wait for June 7th to be here to really start cultivating those relationships. Well, speaking of sweaty palms, uh, Mark, you and I go back a ways and I'm gonna let you tell this story because <laughs> the leader of any organization, you have to be able to fight through and overcome obstacles and make courageous decisions. Yeah. And I'll let you tell the story about how you and I probably realized we were bonded for life in some form. Yeah, I have to say that's the one that goes down on the list. And I won't disclose uh, out of disclosure with a couple of those great physicians that we had. Uh, but I'm Bart, not telling Bart, either. We will not do that. Uh, we were sworn to secrecy there. But um, uh, Bart and I had the pleasure of going up and, and watching a little football game. I believe it was Western Kentucky going to Carbondale, Illinois. They were going to take on the uh, mighty uh, Southern Illinois. And so it was during the fall and obviously Bart and I had the luxury of getting on a quick little plane. We thought it was easier than taking some caravan. Very so little got, plane. Very, very little. small plane. Yeah. So we, we won't mention, but uh, uh, utmost respect for the pilot and we'll, we'll leave it at that. And so, but unfortunately uh, a couple of occurrences occurred on that plane and um, there were five of us on there and uh, um, Bart and I loaded up, we seat belted in, we put our headphones on and, and uh, away we went. Well, we knew, we weren't quite halfway down the runway. And all I know is, is I kind of looked out of the one uh, window, Bart, and I felt like we were kind of going sideways. And uh, the pilot did say, hey, brace yourself a little bit. It's going to be a little turbulent here going. And uh, kind of like that. Remember that little plane where you rolled it up and you had those things with the rubber band and you let it fly and you kind of that plane just kind of went all. I felt a little bit like that that day, Bart. And so but I know you and I looked at each other and, and we got about 10 feet off the ground and we were kind of going back and forth and. I think both of us kind of looked and say, hey, uh, hey, buddy, it's been a special time. It's going to be a good day. And uh, here we went. But needless to say, that was only half the adventure. And so we got there and uh, made it there safely after uh, being tossed around. I know I really couldn't focus much of the second half because I was fearing about going back to the airport and have to get back on that plane. And, you know, as, as, as a football player, you don't want to tell people, hey, uh, I'm going to ride the bus back with them. You know, I'm brave enough. I'm going to brave this out. I'm going to get on the plane again. And we both looked at each other, but I really didn't. I don't know if the the game took place the second half because I was worried about the plane flight. 
So needless to get back, we'll, we'll cut it short. We get on the plane, and I'm thinking, you know what? It's got to be better. You know, winds calm down. It's going to be better. So if you remember, Bart, we got about uh, – it's about 2,000 feet up in the air. And we looked over, and I said, man, this is there's a little draft coming in here. It's a little chilly. And I looked over, and uh, I kind of said, that looks kind of strange. It looks like there's a little uh, peephole there in, in that right uh, – that doorway. And, and the door started expanding a little bit more and more. And needless to say, we finally realized – and uh, the guy who was riding co-pilot said, uh, excuse me, pilot, I think we got a little problem here. Um, he said, what's going on? He said, well, the door's still open over here to the right. <laughs> needless to say, we're 2,000 feet up the air. So I'll say he handled it uh, appropriately. We landed. We uh, we got down, closed the door, and uh, there were some other things in between. But uh, it was an adventurous uh, flight. I l- love the game. Well, when, your pilot, that- when your pilot has put the plane on autopilot, is leaning over his co-pilot, trying to open and shut a door a few thousand feet above the air, uh, I, I'm not comfortable. And I just remember thinking, if I look as scared as Mark Marsh right now, I'm terrified. Uh, <laughs> I think we, I think we all look like Casper. I think on that flight, we were all a little nervous and a little anxious. Uh, I remember saying a couple extra prayers that time and say, "Hey, let me, uh, good Lord, let me get back and see the wife and kids." But uh, it was a little terrifying, that's for sure, Bart. But, but uh, if there's any question that Mark Marsh can deal with obstacles, I, I found out <laughs> that day he can do it. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, a great day. Talk, uh, Mark. Talk a little bit about. Um, what you see as the future, uh, and I know this is a really global question and one that can't be answered in, in a minute, but uh, just generally speaking, what do you see the future of healthcare and communities our size? Where was where yeah, I think, it? yeah, Bart, I think, let me just pre- preface this on, um, there's a long legacy of tradition of Owensboro Health. This goes back to my days in Bowling Green, and I had the pleasure of serving with a former administrator, served on the Kentucky Hospital Association Board, and uh, it's always been a great tradition in providing high quality care, um, safe care in, in Owensboro uh, before the even merger of the hospital and now with you know the system hospital and the other hospitals uh, throughout the communities. I really foresee, uh, Bart, it's really uh, it's through those partnerships uh, with the medical staff, with the board. Uh, we want to maintain to make sure we have the best place to work. We want to make sure our team members, 5,000 team members throughout the region at, at all three of our facilities or ambulatory settings and throughout um, have all the resources to provide high quality care. I think as you put those things and they all come together in a, in a very cohesive approach, right? We got to have a vision. We got some exciting things we're going to be announcing. But, but as we do that, it's going to allow us to have the best outcomes we have. And I like to say, um, I want to make sure our team, we deliver high quality care close to home. And so as we can deliver those great things in, in our communities, in these 11 county regions, I hate to see people, and I don't like seeing uh, patients who have to leave the community. There are certain things that um, are going to be better suited for a big suburban market, but I think there's things we can expand upon, the great things we're doing today to provide great outcomes that allows people to stay in their own communities, uh, allows us to stay in, the, in our southwestern uh, region here to make sure they're in, in getting that and receiving that high-quality care. And so we've watched it. I've watched us do this in Bowling Green. I've watched it now in Orlando, uh, in Clarksville, and other communities. And there's no reason we can't continue to expand upon the great service we provide right here in the Owensboro region. That, that's exciting news because uh, this is a hub, obviously, as you know, uh, in Western Kentucky, and we are, we, uh, we are very important for the entire region. But now we talked a little bit about your, uh, your approach on partnerships with the community. Let's talk about Mark Marsh. I know the answer to this. And if you want, if anybody who's watched you for five minutes knows what you're all about this way, but, what can people expect of Mark Marsh in terms of his engagement in this community? Personally? Yeah. Uh, I'd just like to mention, it's it's free simple. It's high visibility. It's partnerships. I'm going to be on a listening tour. I'll say a listening tour for the first 9, 120 days. Um, I really want to hear firsthand from all the constituents, from the business leaders, from the medical staff, from our team members and to the board. But it's really about how do we do things uh, together. Uh, through that partnerships, um, you're going to find that I'm very approachable. And that's always been my style. And I've learned that a lot of those attributes I've learned from great coaches and a lot of what I've applied, I've learned from the sports environment. I've had the luxury of working under some great leaders. But I think you're going to find me um, very much out in the community, very involved is I won't ask somebody to do something that I'm not going to do. And so I like to roll my sleeves up, but it's really about building those relationships because as we do that and we create the best place to work, I can assure you the correlation will be, we'll have the best outcomes and the most satisfied customers. 
and I know that uh, you have been involved in ch chambers of commerce before. I think you and I have actually been on the chamber board together in the past. Yes. And, uh, if, if, you, if you don't mind, talk to our membership here this morning just a little bit about your your uh, commitment to the to, ch to the chamber of commerce and what you see their role and what you do. Absolutely. The chamber, in many ways, I think is really the, the engine. They're the catalyst. I think about the chamber. I think about the economic development, you know, the boards and committees. And, but as you think about healthcare, it is, is truly a catalyst, um, just like um, education is. But the chamber really is, is our advocate. They're the ones that really help bring it all together for it and bring all the community leaders and all the different businesses. But um, I've watched, uh, again, through our, our serving, such as whether in Bowling Green, Orlando, Clarksville, um, but truly um, through that chamber and the hard work that they do, um, they're the ones that really help propel. And it's gonna allow us to be the engine and be the catalyst. And so that we continue to do great things so that we expand, we create more jobs, we, we, we create uh, you know, better healthcare, better outcomes, better for small business. But um, I am excited to work with the chamber. Um, I wouldn't know uh, how to go to a community without being involved. That was one of my first things is I kind of do my homework and research. I wanna make sure that chamber is strong. And I've met, had the pleasure of working with the leaders there. Um, they're highly visible. They're like me, very engaged, uh, very interactive. And so I'm really excited about being involved and really being, the, being a part of the fabric there with the chamber. Well, I think you know this, but the, the chamber and its membership will be totally committed to, to your leadership at yeah. Owensboro Health. We're, we couldn't be more excited as a community that you're gonna be coming in here not just the community, but the helm of the hospital. Now, uh, let's talk about your timetable. When are you and the family gonna get to move to Owensboro? I think you mentioned June 7th, and then I'll let you just uh, close with any parting message you'd like to have for our audience. Yeah, well, hey, Mark, can't, I'm so excited. Uh, June 7th, can't come quick enough. That's my first day, certainly, uh, um, at the hospital and, and various hospitals and throughout the community, but yeah, June 7th. Um, so I'll be packing up um, myself and uh, my oldest son's coming up. He's going to be doing an internship uh, this summer in Nashville, but we'll load up this Saturday. We'll do the caravan and be up there a couple of days before uh, get settled in. The rest of the family will join me here at the middle of June. And so um, I'm excited. Uh, I know uh, my assistant and the folks there uh, have got me loaded up uh, in the first uh, few weeks uh, out there meeting folks. And um, I'm going to tell everybody, just approach me like anywhere else. Um, I'm looking for inputs, how we can better things. And so um, I, I'm just looking forward to getting out there in the community. But yeah, June 7th, uh, I'll be at the helm and and really getting to know the team members and so excited about that day. Yeah, well, Mark, uh, we really appreciate you taking time today. I know that you're still actually working in Orlando as well. Like any good quarterback, you, you play to the <laughs> final buzzer. So we appreciate you taking time away from all you're doing to spend a little time with us here in Owensboro and at the Rooster Booster Breakfast. And Bart, I appreciate your friendship. Look forward to it and look forward to uh, getting really engaged here in the coming weeks. Sounds great. Talk to you have soon. Have a great day, bud. Mark Marsh, thank you a bunch. And we are thrilled to have you on as CEO of Owensboro Health. Candace, another virtual rooster booster in the books. Another one's there. Yep. I know. And this is crazy because this is our final virtual event. It's our final. Yeah. And you know what makes it our final virtual event? The fact that people are getting COVID-19 vaccinated. Look, y'all know, I've been very vocal about it. I had it, I could not get that shot in this arm fast enough. And a lot of folks feel that same way. Absolutely, Chad. And that's why today we're gonna have a vaccination clinic at the convention center. It's come, going on in just a little bit. And it's gonna be open until one o'clock today. We, we look forward to everyone show up, get vaccinated so we can all be a part of of getting back to normal. Yeah. And this is a drive through event today, by the way. So if you are going to, if you want to participate, stay in the car. All you got to do yeah. is come down Locust to second and you'll get paperwork. They'll get you vaccinated. You pull over and wait 15 minutes, just like you would if you went to a pharmacy or anywhere else. And uh, after that 15 minutes is uh, elapsed, you're good to go and you're COVID-19 vaccinated and that's what it's all about. And you will also not only be a part of that and making the community better, you'll get Western merch too. So yes. come out for merch. And speaking of Western, we got to say goodbye to this guy right here. Big Red, thanks for having us out this morning. I know he can't talk, but he can nod, right? Yes. And exactly. to our, all of our friends back here. Yes! yes. From our friends at WKU Owensboro and the Greater Owensboro Chamber of Commerce, thanks for Good joining touch. us for Rooster Booster. We will see you next month in person! Yeah.